Let's talk about Langham. You said Langham was he, he your beginning. Of, he and, and Hirsch. And Hirsch, those two men. Hirsch brought me in. Right. And Langham said, he's not nearly was your good. first show? Yeah. It was after the debacle with Robin Phillips and the Gang of Four. And you were in uh, Mary Stewart? Of course I was. I have. <laughs> of course I was. You don't remember me? I was Davison. I was the one who was holding the. I was a f***ing disaster, Mary Stewart. I remember that play. Well, I remember what I remember most about it, Robert, <laughs> was a moment of scintillating Canadian theatre history, which I know your skin will crawl, where me and Keith DeNicol and some others of young note were there in the company. And as I recall, you were doing what you often do, which I have stolen to my great advantage, acting barefoot. This is painful for me. Uh, acting barefoot with the redoubtable Margot Dion. And she was acting in a particularly, well, an odd way. It had not been the same as she'd acted it the day before, which was not unusual for her. She was very inspired. But you were finding it, I think, difficult to go, what are you going to be doing? And John Hirsch said, stop, 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 stop. What? What? Bob, Bob. And you hate being called Bob. Bob, what are you doing? And we're all, we called him Bob. Oh, dear. This isn't going to end well. Bob, what are you doing? What's happened to this scene? And you said, very graciously, I, I don't know, John, I, I, I think it, we had it yesterday. It, 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 you know, it was in the body, and uh, it's just, it's, it slipped away uh, today. Well, when do you think it might be back in the body, he asked. And you said, I, John, I, I imagine very soon. Well, I hope so, because frankly, I'm shitting my pants. We open on Tuesday. And we just thought, this is Canadian theater history. And, and Bob, our ace as we do him, is, is soldiering through this beautifully. Having said that, you know, the whole uh, barefoot thing, and I digress for a moment, I stole that from you because you were gracious enough to come to the theater school when I was there, and I believe play <coughs> Theseus in A Midsummer Night's Dream, directed by Henry Tarvena, if memory serves. And I played Aegeus, nosegays and nosebags and whatnot. And I, I stole everything you did, and I took it. To great advantage. You are far too flattering. Instantly, I got a job. I got a job, my first good job. I'm responsible for your career? At the, yes, at. Let it be known. At the no, National Art Center, John Wood was looking for actors to help out in Neil Monroe's Henry V because he'd lost a couple of players and Ben Campbell was in it, was going off to do something else, a Joe Horton play at the same time. So they needed some people. And they phoned the theater school to ask to send people, and the theater school didn't send me, and then they asked for more people, and the theater school didn't send me. And then, finally, when John said, is this all you have? They said, well, no, there's this one other guy, but I don't, mean, you know, you're looking for a classical actor, we don't want it. And he said, well, send him, because these other guys, no. And I went to audition for John, and I, I took all the pages out of your book. I said, I, excuse me, John, I hope you don't mind. I love to read these speeches, but uh, I'm just gonna prepare, and I'm in my jeans, and take off my shoes, and take off my socks, because you often worked barefoot and were grounded. Now, I was probably still floating high off the, the ground as it was, but I thought, I'm at least going through the motions of being on the ground. I'm, I'm, I'm rooted to this experience. I'm going to take a deep breath, and damn it, I'm going to be here and present in this moment, and hopefully something will hap happen. And he offered me the job before I left the room, so thank you. Tell me about Hirsch. So Hirsch, he was, a, he was a demon to some people, he was a genius to others, he was incredibly articulate, he hurt actors, and he incredibly helped actors. Well, and, you know, I, I, the story I tell about you and uh, Bob, and when will it be in the body, he had just <laughs> finished turning to me and got, what is all this farting and blowing Michelin man acting you are doing? You're going to have egg all over your face. You, you should be like the boy from E.T. You just, you're just crying, that's all you do. They just, stop with the, <laughs> what is that? And he turned to, who was it? Oh, his name will come to me. And he said, the guy came in with a torch to say that you had left to tell Pat Galloway as Elizabeth. He said, what is this Bride of Frankenstein acting you are doing? I mean, he was brutal, but it was very often true. And so <laughs> I, I got into the company because of Hirsch, because of the, the melee after uh, Robin leaving and the board not being happy with the Gang of Four and going to John Dexter and then the equity and blah, 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 blah. And there was John who had, t who had taken over the theater with Jean Gascon, Ensemble. And they'd figured that that probably didn't work very well. So 
Hirsch graciously uh, backed away, went off to Seattle to run the Seattle Rep, which he was doing at the time, and Gascon continued on. So when they were in trouble, pardon me, the theater went back to him and said, and said, go ahead, check the other camera. Um, so when John Hirsch was, was going to take over, it was really an emergency situation, and he really wasn't available. It, it, he was still obliged to the Seattle rep, and he was just grabbing people all over the place that he knew and saying, you've got to help me out. It's a disaster. We'll have some of Robin Phillips' company, uh, whoever wants to stay, who doesn't. So we better audition some people. We'd all thought, the new young people in the community in Toronto and wherever we were hanging out, that Stratford was a closed shop. There was no way you could get in. But John, who would run the CBC, had Ann Tate and Dorothy Gardner working for him as casting directors. And so they were grabbing everybody that they'd met in CBC casting sessions, saying, you want to audition for Stratford? You're just out of NTS. You should probably do this. I was too late for this. I was finally, Ann Tate called me and said, look, we've done all the auditions. I said, I didn't know you needed anybody. I thought, you, Phillips has got a company of 150 year old. No, no, John's going to be doing some house cleaning. There's a people coming and some foundational members, blah, 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 blah. blah. So come. So Hirsch saw me. I went to a church up on Avenue Road somewhere. I snuck in the back door, knocked four times, and was admitted, and you know, got five lines into a speech of Romeo's. And no, no, what? No, stop, bad. Try this. Uh, four lines in, stop, bad. I mean, it was like that for the whole time. And then I left thinking, this is a disaster. And as one often does as an actor, you've got to give yourself some sort of encouragement. So I bought a, you know, a nice coffee and a donut somewhere and went, that was just a waste of time. But apparently not. I got a call, and from John, not too long after, saying, good, you could come, you join the company, and you're going to be uh, the page in uh, Taming of the Shrew. You'll be in drag, the whole show, it will be fabulous. I said, oh, well. What something. did he teach you? Um, first of all, I didn't get to do the drag show because... The, state, the, the place was in such a state of chassis, as they say, that I ended up playing Tranio, second male lead after Petruchio. Me and Len Carey were dashing about. I was 20, maybe 21 years old, and I was on the festival stage, and I was in four, I was in five shows, and I could only ever have actually been in four. This is when we were doing 12 a week. I was doing everything in Coriolanus for, for Brian Bedford directing, uh, Misanthrope, with Jean Gascon. I think we were doing Comedy of Errors. I was doing the Tranio and the Tammy of the Shrew. And I was understudying Richard Manette as Captain Absolute in The Rivals, a show I could never have seen, let alone been in. And finally, the festival figured that out. And they thought, we paid him all this extra money to learn these lines. I said, but I've learned the lines. I've learned the blog. I'm ready to do it. But Nora Pauly, who was stage managing pretty much all the other shows, said, if you think I'm taking him out of Tranio to go over and play that, no, you idiots. So there was a lot of left hand not talking to right. But what did Hirsch do to me and for me? First of all, he hired me. He saw through all of the badness. And he went, mm, something. He then came to the opening night of Taming the Shrew, a show he had not directed, and said, what are you doing? Tranio is meant to be funny. <laughs> You're not funny. I should have hired Heath Lamberts. He's funny. What is all this you are doing? I thought I was supposed to be a baby Len Cario. I thought he was supposed to be dashing. I'm pretending to be the master. Not stupid master, classy, elegant, fabulous master. I spent the rest of the year trying to be funny. I realized I'm never going to be funny. But he was always honest. It just made me laugh. What do you mean you're not funny? Not professionally. But he was honest and honest and honest. And I thought, OK, I'll keep working. I'll keep working. I'll figure this out. And I did another year for him. And it got a little better. I got smaller parts, and I could focus on it a bit more. And then the third year, he had me back, but he sent me to Langham's Young Company. So I'd been two years on the main stage, playing big parts, massive parts, small parts, all kinds of parts. And then he said, you go to Michael. And Michael said, oh, OK, he's green, we'll have it. And Michael said, you'll play, we'll do two plays in repertory. We'll do Love's Labor's Lost and Much Ado. You will play Claudio in Much Ado, and you'll be a scholar in Love's Labor. Scholar? Is that actually a part? Not really, but that's all I can trust you with. 
And it was Did you say trust you with? Well, that's well, that, whatever. That was, okay. that, was the, that was the gist of it. And it was a remarkable season because what both he and Hirsch, I think, re realized and recognized is that I was playing because of my skill set. That is to say, I could stand up straight, I could carry the costume, carry a sword, and speak reasonably clearly. I gave the impression of knowing a great deal more than I, I did, and perhaps having more, you know, gravitas and, and avoir du poids than I certainly did as a human that being. That was my impression of you in Mary Stewart. That was my impression of you in Julius Caesar. I thought, how come Colm is so confident on stage? He just looks like he belongs. That's through the haze of my, mm -hmm. my terror of that year. But it that was, my God, this Colm guy, wow, he just belongs here. I love being there. I liked that. I felt at home in that environment. I also felt enormously supported and helped by people like Hirsch who said, you're not there yet. I don't know who told you you were, but you're not. And he never stopped saying that. I mean, he, you could tell that he, he, he was encouraged because he, he'd keep hiring me. But it, it, there was always the, mm-hmm, yeah, and, mm-hmm, and. And so I always, I always wanted to please him, but I always knew there was more to do. And I always knew that intellectually he was so rigorous that there was always more to do because I was, you know, I was a punk and we were having fun. We were engaged. We had a lot of great friends here, you know, Joe Ziegler's and Ben Campbell's, and, uh, Andrew Gillies's and uh, all of these guys, Stephen Russell's. There was a, a great gang of young people who were thrilling to what we were discovering. But, we, you know, we're rough. We needed a bit of polishing. Certainly I did. And so Hirsch knew that it needed a core. Langham knew that, and that there was no way for me to get it through acting. I wasn't going to be able to figure it out by doing more parts. Uh, I was going to figure it out by doing at least one part, honestly. And the only ghost of a chance I really had at doing that was doing something that made some real sense to me as a human being, because I was very much of the Michel Saint-Denis opinion. You know, first to be an artist, you must be a man. And that, you know, obviously we have nothing much to recommend us as young people except our energy, our enthusiasm, and hopefully our, you know, our delight in the world, but not a whole lot of wisdom. 